Show me. Show me. <laughs> Show me how. Stay right here, baby. So I can love you, love you. A little bit more. Don't walk away from me, baby. Like that. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Now, this is just going to be a little quick education. A lot of y'all know this, so you can tune out. But uh, I really realized um, on last evening just how many of the young people do not understand how this government works. Um, they don't even know the branches of government and what branch is responsible for what. So I thought I'd take the time and whatever side of the diaspora that you own, welcome and uh, help me help them by spreading the video because it's really important that we have an election coming up and at least know what the heck, how to, how to, it's like riding a bike and don't know how to fix a flat, right? So I want to start with knowing the three branches of government, okay? Um, and we're going to break down what the three branches of government are. You have the legislative, you have the executive, and you have the judicial. Let's say that again. Legislative, executive, and judicial. Okay? Those are your branches. Now, your legislative branch is made up of the House and the Senate. Okay? Um... You know, Senate is like Cory Booker. Um, I think that's his name. And, and Tim Scott. Uh, House of Representatives. You know, you got Marjorie Taylor, crazy ass green. You got Cory Booker. You know, that's your house. So the legislative branch is made up of the House and the Senate, which is collectively known as Congress. Okay? That's what when they say, we're going to take this to Congress. This is who they taking it to, these branches of your government. The legislative branch makes all the laws, declares war, regulates interstate and foreign commerce, and control taxing and spending policy. Okay? That's what your legislative branch does. Now, let me repeat that. Your legislative branch is made up of the House and the Senate, collectively known as the Congress. The legislative branch makes all the laws, declares war, regulates interstate and foreign commerce, and controls taxing and spending policies. Okay. So, the federal. You got two senators per state. And House, you got 435 voting, six non-voting members, um, and that's, ba that's, that's pretty much based on the state, I think, in the population. Yeah. So you have 435 members that can vote, six non-voting members, and um, that's based, again, on the state population. But you also have two senators per state. Um, who is my senator? My senator is, uh, I think, who is my our senator? Senator Gwen Moore? Uh, and who's the other one? I don't know. Uh, but this, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. We, we, um, we should know because 
basically all politics are local. You know, and the people that we uh, vote in on a local level are really in effect are the ones that's, that's, that control the stuff. Okay? So the state is a bicameral legislative body with the House and the Senate. Except um, Nebraska, it only has, with only senators. Nebraska only has senators. Okay? And then if we're talking about the local, we got the city council, um which might be your aldermen or your, what they call them, city, um, what they call them in Chicago, I can't think. Anyway, varying in size and in structure. This is all your local. So, see, when you vote on this level right here, it's really important. Okay? So, the next step is the judicial branch. So under Article 3 of the Constitution, it interprets, explains, and applies the laws. That's what this branch is supposed to do. However, I think we've got a Supreme Court that's done gone rogue, um, and nobody is even thinking about addressing that. Not just because Donald Trump appointed all those uh, Republican crazy some MAGA like Clarence Thomas wife but this is a very important branch okay so on the federal level you got the Supreme Court you got nine justices nominated by the president and approved by the Senate so the Senate has to approve of the nominee nomination or the nominee that the president up, um, uh, um, introduces. Okay? Lower federal courts handle appeals, taxes, bankruptcy, and things like that. Okay, that's all still federal court. Then you got the state court. You got the state supreme court, state court of appeals, the trial courts, juvenile courts, and family courts, right? These are very important branches because when you vote for these people on the state level, they have the ability and the possibility of controlling how your trial goes, Okay? When you understand if the judge is conservative, if the judge is a MAGA judge, that means when you walk in with a black face, you already know if he has anything to do with it, he's going to over, probably overturn it, anything he can. Then you have the local, which is your m municipal courts, okay? And they got specified jurisdiction. So... Everybody is familiar, I'm sure, with these branches of the court system. Because we didn't been a part of them. Okay? So, again, we have the legislative branch. We talked about them. Now, the judicial. And now we have the executive branch. The executive branch consists of the president, their advisors, as well as various departments. And they are responsible for enforcing the laws of the land. Federal executives are, you know, president of the United States, the vice president, and 15 cabinet members. See those cabinet members. Now, when they run for the cabinet members, I mean, when they are appointed as cabinet members, then you know that's the president's team, right? You got 15 of them. Uh, then you got uh, the state. You got the governor, lieutenant governor, and the state cabinet makers, members. Local, you have your mayor or your city council. That's all the executive branch, and it's the local 
branch of the executive order. Okay? So, knowing that all of these branches are very important, remember, Supreme Court, nine justices nominated by the presidents and approved by the Senate, lower court, uh, lower federal courts handle appeals, taxes, bankruptcy, etc. The state Supreme Court is next because then you have the Court of Appeals, Trials, Juvenile Courts, and Family Courts, and then local. This is all part of your judicial, your court system. They interpret the law, okay? The legislative branch, a, a branch creates the law. Two Senate senators per state and the House. Non-voting members based on state population. Okay? You got non-voting members, six of them, and then you have 435 voting members. Then you got the state. Bicameral legislative body with the House and the Senate. Okay, and then you have your local branch of the legislative. Now, these people create the laws, the city council, and, you know, uh, they vary in state, decide if we can um, pass certain ordinances and stuff like that. These, these votes are very important. But it seems like the only one we really care about is the executive. And we put a lot of power and a lot of credence in the executive branch. But as you can see, these other branches really control this. Okay? And that's why you have, this is supposed to keep it in checks and balances. So at the executive level, you got the president, then you got the state lieutenant governor and the governors, um, and the state cabinet members, and then again, your mayor and your city council. Those are all executive branches of the federal government. Okay? Now, for Kelly <laughs> and Janice, I hope that this really, really um, helps you in defining who does what. This is about as basic as we can be, okay? You know, whichever branch you want to go to, if you want to make the complaints and stuff like that, and I think the first thing we got to do, make sure we do, is know who our representatives are, okay? Because that's a very important because that's where it's going to start. Who, I think, who, no, I think it's Senator Tammy Baldwin. Who is it? Um, I think my senator is Tammy Baldwin. Um, but, yeah, it is. The thing is, you have to know who these people are, what they stand for, and if you don't like what they stand for, and you already know that they're a MAGA, you don't have to wait and guess. You can find out. You can find out and then decide if your ideas align with theirs. If they don't, back off. You see what I'm saying? So I hope that helps. Um, and in the meantime, if you, and when you, and if you vote, please make a wise choice. Please go out there and vote. And um, the one thing I don't think we can afford to lose is democracy. I don't care who's turning the page. That right there is scary because y'all don't know what that looks like. And a lot of people act like it don't matter, but it does. Democracy is very important. The American experience uh, depends on it. I mean, this is it. America was an experiment. But it's not going to be cool if you decide that you want a dictator for the rest of your life, controlling it. And if you think 
Donald Trump is it, then I know you've lost your mind. So I'm not. It's not even like you need you 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 you're in, you're just unencourageable, as they say. You can't even be helped. If you think this the way to go, somebody that will do all of this. First of all, on a moral level, then I know where you where you stand. You ain't. I'm not on your team. You know. So with that being said, learn who your senators are. Um, learn those three branches of government that are very important and then try to make a informed decision of who you should vote for, okay? Um, if you don't like these sanctuary cities or if you don't want to, your first thing is to try to write them and hit them up first. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. All right, with that being said, I hope you get it. And if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video.